Welcome back everybody to Rimworld. I've taken your feedback from yesterday's episode, particularly regarding the darkness. I've completely taken that mod out. Having watched it back on YouTube myself, I realized what you're talking about with the crazy amount of, of actual compression on that made it almost unwatchable. So I apologize about that, but I wasn't able to know and actually, actually until it was uploaded to YouTube. So one thing I found is that if we're trying to ban in the first city we spawn in, the game generally tends to go a little bit haywire. I don't know if it's not intended for you to have no settlements like that, because that's essentially what we're doing, right? We're getting rid of our starting point so we have no home base. And I think the game sort of shifts itself at that stage so we'll have to keep that first seat kicking around but obviously we don't have to ever go back to it and we can abandon it when we found our more permanent settlement so the actual gameplay loop then and we've, we've obviously got to start a new character here so we might as well just dive straight into it but our actual gameplay loop is gonna be the basic sort of same thing right so we're, we're la launching as this character now i'm gonna go reload any time mode just in case we get any crashes but i'm not actually gonna reload unless it crashes if that makes sense this is still a survival series it's still meant to be a bit more hardcore it's meant to be a bit more uh committal than our normal series that we'll do so we'll uh, dive in here so, the, the actual gameplay loop, like I was saying, is going to be surviving this first sort of few nights, being nomadic. So I know a lot of people want to see that more nomadic sort of world traveling play style, where we're going from point A to point B, actually exploring around, going to different cities, gathering loot, moving on, as, as in you kind of would with a, with a zombie style survival simulator. I myself sort of liken it to Oregon Trail, um, which is kind of like, I mean, people know what Oregon Trail is, I'm not going to describe it. But kind of something similar to that. And then the next step of the campaign, the sort of next big part of it, if we manage to get through that, is obviously going to be contacted by the AI who will tell us where the spaceship is. We're going to go to the AI, bunker down, start that spaceship up and get off this planet before it all blows up. That's the overall goal of this campaign. So it's a little different to the Jilt one in that we actually have a goal. You know, we have this ultimate the, this ultimate means of escaping. I've got to set up all my settings again unless we can uh, we can download them. I think I named them something like Roll 1D2 Game blah blah blah. Uh, roll... No, that didn't work, okay. Nope, it's not on there. All right, fantastic. Uh, never mind. I will set all this up and we'll just dive straight in. But our world this time is, is very slightly different. We don't have that gigantic sea in the middle of it, which was kind of a pain in the ass last time. Now, we want to start still somewhere central to the planet. So I'm going to assume it's the, the actual middle point would be somewhere around here because I, all of this was going to be the, the furthest bounds. The ice sheet is also accessible this time. So I can imagine the AI is probably going to spawn up there. We, we actually could... If we're clever with things, encourage the air to spawn in a bit more of a convenient place. For example, if we start on the ice cap, the air will spawn the furthest distance away. So it'll probably be somewhere down here. Similarly, if we start over here, it would be most likely on this side. So we probably want to start near the center, because again, that's going to lower the amount of distance we actually have to travel, but closer to the ice cap to try and encourage the AI to maybe spawn down here instead, because the last thing we want to do, you know, is have the AI up on that ice thing, having to travel through there with no food or anything else. Now, the only other thing I'm concerned about is I don't know whether or not the AI can spawn on islands, at which point the only play way to get to it is with launch pods. You would have to build a, a pod launcher and have to actually go over there after, you know, refining chem fuel, doing all those things. So we're going to kind of aim around this upper area. I'm kind of thinking maybe on this main road so let's, let's go for there boreal forest ancient asphalt road and stone road plus god knows what that means so we're going to roll with this one that way we've got access to this main road we can keep traveling we can get a lot of forage this is this is a pretty good start i think let's roll with it we're going to prepare carefully and we're going to load of course my preset that i've set up yesterday we've got our good friend zilp zomble definitely not definitely and of course his classic wrench there let's dive straight in i am finished with my customizations good luck everyone here we go so we're going to start immediately with the picking you guys point out a lot of things to me that i actually never knew about you know, drafted pawns, things like being able to hold control to still interact with things, which means we can play permanently in drafted mode, which is obviously quite nice. We can just go to the map edges to apparently leave. I thought you could only do that in instances. Turns out apparently you could do it on your home base as well. I had genuinely no idea, so that's pretty incredible. This obviously counts our home base to start off with here. We know the story. We know how it ties into the previous series and all that stuff. All right, here we are. This is an interesting looking city, I think. We'll do our usual thing of actually uh, locking the camera onto... Oh my god, is this deep water? Oh, it's marsh. Thank god for that. I've got the mod where we can't cross deep water, so we'd have had to dug into this building. Right, let's go ahead and allow that. Let's get our boy drafted up. So apparently if we hold control... Oh, that's so useful. Thank you for letting me know about that, because I have really no idea. Right, go and get that equipped as soon as possible, and then we'll go and explore the city. Hopefully this time we can find some... A, a gun rather than having to kill someone. Because that was really the problem we had last time, right? Is we had to club someone over the head to get a decent weapon. Let's play on a slightly slower speed. Now, again, if we can find... Uh, oh, man. We're looking for, like, armor. Backpack is also huge. So, oh, careful, careful. Oh, they're, they're wearing a backpack. And they're wearing what looks appear to be a uh, melee attack. They look like they're also wearing um, pouches there on their front. So there's pouches you store ammo in, and they increase reload speed. I apologize if I cough or splutter or anything today. Like, the, the flu that I had a couple of weeks ago is basically onto my lungs now. It's really difficult to breathe. I'm okay, though. I'm not, like, coughing or sneezing or anything. I'm just maybe literally dying. 
Come on, Job. You can do better than this, my man. You've got you you've got your trusty wrench. You're losing against someone who is completely unarmed by the looks of it. Um, what's her melee stat? N nothing. Oh, because he's actually knocked her down. Good. Right, let's strip her. Let's take her backpack. Because like I was talking about, this is a. Oh, this is incredible. We got what looks like a Devil Strand Duster. Oh, that's fantastic. We've got ourselves an armor vest. We got ourselves a backpack. We got ourselves a tactical vest, and we got ourselves some pants. I don't think we really need the pants. In fact, don't bother with the pants. I'll cancel that when we get up to that. Get that backpack on. Get this on as well. Let's go ahead and cancel. Now, these Twinkies are survival meals. They're just like really skinned to be a zombie land reference, like I said. Um, all right, let's follow Zilp, and let's keep heading around this map. Do we need to be... Uh, do you want to tend to yourself right now, my man? Just quickly patch up what you can. Make some make some sort of temporary tourniquets, whatever else we've got going on here. Whoa! Hello. Um, he's got himself a dueling pistol, a flinklock pistol. My god, to see a bullet whizzing past. Okay, um, probably that might have been his friend. You know, we're standing over his friends now, naked and sufficiently clubbed dead body. Oh my god, we were suppressed. Get around the corner. Seven zombies. Okay, um, what do we want to do here then? I think we start just moving away from him. I don't particularly want to... We could always flank around, try and whack him over the head. I don't want to risk this. This man's got a gun. We don't at the end of the day, so I'm not I'm not bringing a wrench to a gunfight. Let's go and have a look around then, see if we can't at least get ourselves a decent weapon this time around before we leave the city. And this is a big old city. I like that it's a bit more open than the last one. You know, it's got these gigantic walls and things, and, and obviously the huge river, whereas the last one was just a mass of buildings. It's kind of really difficult to find things in that. You want it to be a bit more open? Um, come on, give us, give us anything here. Please. Just a, just the smallest of guns. The finest of guns. And these guys are, I assume, just like scavengers, essentially. Because they're not actually hostile to us unless we knock them over the head, apparently. At least from what we found out there, right? Come on. Let's, uh... Oh, here's a big building. This could be it. This could be pretty decent. Come on. A gun, please. Now, I've, I've done this a couple of times before while I was testing this mod pack to see if it... Our bedroll is fantastic. There we go. That's a pretty big get right there. Prioritize on installing that. Thank you very much. Let's get that picked up as well. Fantastic. That's really going to solve our problems on the road. Oh, he's not tended to still. Sorry, I thought we'd... Oh, right, because he was tending to himself, and then a bullet came towards him. It's kind of understandable, really. Um, is that one slightly higher quality? No, it's normal. Uh, the other one's leather, that one's cloth. I don't know if that affects the comfort at all. I'm going to assume it doesn't. I'm not going to I'm not gonna bother pissing around with that. We're, we're kind of on a time limit, you know? We're kind of on a time limit in the sense that the longer we hang around here, the harder it's going to get to survive. It's an ancient danger in the middle of a city. Oh, God. We could crack that open and see what's in there. This is a horrible idea. I love it. Let's get to it. Prioritize deconstructing. All right. I, I'm going to regret this. It's going to be mechanoids and centipedes and... What have we got? Bugs? Oh, my God. There's nothing in here. There's a boomer like Oh, there's insects. Shit. Um, I kind of saw those grenades and I thought to myself, boy, I'd really like some grenades. Let's leave. Let's leave. Uh, please run. Please run as fast as your little legs will carry you. This is horrendous. Um, do we want to just get out of here? Because those things are really closing fast. Okay, they've, they've fucked off. That's good. They don't want to follow us too much. Um, yeah, you guys did say we could go right to the edge of the map here, couldn't we? And that would that would get us out of here. Um, or not. <laughs> did, you, did you lie to me? Did you guys lie to me? I, I thought that it was only on maps that weren't your home base. Uh, and this is this is our home base, technically, because it's where we spawned in. So I, I don't know if that is still true. Maybe maybe uh, maybe the people in the comment section were misunderstanding what was going on. Because they're definitely not a green border on the map, huh? Right, let's head out here. I thought I wasn't going completely crazy. You guys are making me... You're gaslighting me. Let's take a look. Come on, please. Just one gun. That's all I want. Just a single... Just a single pistol. A single rifle. <gasps> What have we found? Oh my god, we've got a shield belt, we've got binoculars. Oh, what are, what are binoculars used for? Um, power binoculars and portable radar are used for co uh, coordinating artillery strikes. Right, okay. So they make... They, they Oh, a shield belt is obviously fantastic. But they, they I would assume, make um, you know mortars and things like that a bit more effective, huh? This was a big find. A shield belt is fantastic, because in, uh, in, in Combat Extended, from my own personal experience, if you've watched any of the series before where we've used this, tend to be extremely powerful, like... like ridiculously hard to break levels. Um, okay, just watch out for the beds. Now, one of you pointed out, if we set it so the zombies can attack animals, there's a fucking heart right there. If we set it so the zombies can attack animals, then if the zombies attack the animals, the animals go aggressive. The animals will then hunt us down if they defeat the zombies. I, I was kind of hoping that would be part of the difficulty, you know? The trade-off for the animals being a distraction is if the animals beat them, if there's a particularly powerful animal, like a big old bear or a big old lion or whatever, and they manage to beat the zombies, that they're then going to come for us. Iron husk beetle meat. Someone's been around here then, you would you would assume. Right, come on, let's take a look. Still nothing. How long do we want to leave it before we run? 55 zombies. Maybe when it starts going to nighttime is when we want to get out of here. We've, we've actually picked through a, a huge amount of the city this time around, huh? Camera's being a bit weird. Apologize for that. That's not that's not my panic. That's the game sort of freaking out, I think, just judging by the size of the map and the amount of shit we've got going on. We are going to have to... We need to find some food. 
Okay. Okay. Uh, I think we found the hoard. Let's quickly back out as soon as possible. Thank you very much. We got in here some silver. Fucking good god, you scared the life out of me, you big tortoise shit. Okay. Um, we got more silver in here. Good god. What are those? SMG ammo. Okay, they're hollow point SMG ammo, which I assume would be super effective against zombies, huh? Um, this is quite a nice base if we want to set up camp. This is quite a nice base if we want to set up camp for the night. Yeah, lots of easily defendable rooms. We sit in the middle here. The zombies are going to be find out have a very hard time getting over to us. I still want to be somewhat careful. I would I would much prefer to grab a gun and run because there's definitely a gun on this map somewhere. And one of the ways we can tell it's it's kind of a little bit cheating, but gives us a little bit of knowledge is if we go over to the uh was it the assign tab? We go to the loadout. We go we open this one up or, or edit it whatever new loadout, and we can actually see here that the binoculars there are frag grenades. There is nothing. Oh my god. Uh, wait, really? Or is that just things we've seen? I'm not going crazy, am I? So shame we didn't get to see into this building a bit more, because there's obviously a, a, a quite a large building there. Alright, be careful. There's 84 zombies on this map. There's one right there. Now, they don't become super aggressive unless there's a big horde of them. Uh, so, oh god, there's a cat of... What are those things called? The man traps? Okay, um, this is, uh, really, really risky, and I'm actually kind of shitting myself a little bit. To be fair, these night times are still... Chief died. Oh, right. I really don't care about that. There's a zombie actually following us around there. Be careful, because this is where we saw the horde. This is where we saw the horde, little zilp. I'm going to I'm gonna camera onto him. That way we can get an idea of what's hanging around nearby. Oh, God, we don't want to be in areas. Any areas that connect to the outside with, with sort of open walls are, are a death sentence. We found a hospital here. Actually, nothing in it. Did you got any You got any guns in this? Who was that? I saw, I saw a person. Was that the spirit of zilp, zilp past? My God, I swear I saw a person then. Oh, plasteel. Okay, we found ammo. Okay, be careful running around here because we know there are... Okay, medicine. Medicine is exactly what we're after here. We might have to set up those... Uh, we might have to set up those... That bedroll and just sort of sit and rest for the night, I think. Because this is getting very risky. Um, anything else? Or are we... Oh, come on. There's got to be something. Oh, that's the outside wall. Don't go through there. Wow. Okay. We've got really unlucky in terms of the stuff we found this time. Obviously, yesterday when we were playing, we found a huge amount of shit compared to what we found now. Pemmican, we found survival meals, we found, you know, we still found the same backpack. We found out an actual gun after we killed someone and took it. I mean, I can't, can't really argue that. It's, we still found it at the end of the day. Ah, now this is what we're after. Okay. Um, we found some sort of old dilapidated freezer. Right. So we've got nutrient paste meals. Obviously, I'd rather not take those if we can avoid it. Let's pick these up. Um, pick those up. Bring them with us. Let's head sort of around this area then. Um, this is looking nice. Okay, we could just rest in the... If we enter a crypto sleep casket, can we get ourselves back out? Or does someone have to let us out? Because that seems like the safest place to be in a zombie invasion, right? Just being frozen in a big old metal coffin. Maybe it's the worst place to be. I'm not entirely sure. Is this outdoors again? Oh, God, this is so dangerous. 90 zombies. Just take it slow. Take it slow. Like, we haven't... We've, we've, we know roughly where the horde is, because we saw them before. There's also a Z on the map, so that's either an animal. Does zombies sleep? I'm going to assume they don't. All right. These big areas where we've got big, open, sort of swaths of land. Big... Oh, God, major break risk. We're going to have to take a break soon. Big areas of vision kind of scare me a little bit, because the horde could just run at us, and we would never be able to outrun it at that point, right? Um, I think we'll set up camp here. I think we'll set up camp here. I'm going to forbid both these doors, and then we'll uh, we'll kip down for the night, because this is this is super dangerous. Right, let's get that bedroll set up, my man. Um, right, so excuse me, let's... Uh, oh, right, we have to actually start setting up the install, don't we? There we go. Okay, little zilp, get yourself a bedroll set up, and we are just going to wait this out. I think this time around, actually maxing out as rest bar would be probably the safest thing we can do, right? Because the one thing that's going to kill us here is our inability to to actually be able to move around. Still 90 zombies. I thought that the zombies would disappear during the daytime, but they really don't, which makes this even riskier staying for as long as we have. All right, be careful. Again, like I said, these big open areas are definitely not where we want to be. Zombies are fighting the wildlife, which is which is fine. My god, we're really not finding anything. Maybe maybe the, the, maybe the, uh, the loadout tab is accurate. You know, maybe there is nothing on... Fuck. Maybe there is nothing on the map. Um, alright. Oh god, we found a horde. Okay, let's 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 back out a bit there. Let's back out a little bit. If we get into a building, they won't actually knock the building door down unless they're agitated. So we'll sort of head back into this direction. Were they just inside? Oh no, there was clearly a wall wall on the other side they've they've probably gone through. Maybe we want to leave this map, huh? Oh god. That's never a good sign. Um 
<laughs> I think it's time to go. Do you guys agree? I think I think it's time we leave. Unfortunately, we haven't really found a weapon. Oh god, what the fuck was that thing? That's not even a zombie. That's just a horrible beast. We've not found any weapons, or we we haven't found a decent weapon. We've still got our wrench, but it's obviously not incredible. We haven't found any really long-term meal plans, so we can only go to places where there are. Oh, those eye trees get me every single time. We can only really go play. Oh, pemmican. 43 pemmican. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, I take back everything I said. That's fine. Let's get off this fucking map. Again, I'm not entirely sure whether or not the, the instruction I was given about going to just the map edges is entirely accurate when this is our home base, right? Because, I mean, it's our, it's our home base. On other maps, I'm well aware that that is the case, but this one is probably not the same. Oh, get out of there, my man. Get out of there. Get out of there. We've got these shields, and I very much doubt the zombies can get through the shields. Okay, we need to leave. We need to leave. Let's get over here. Let's plan the trip. Again, unfortunately, with this, we are going to have to plan out a caravan route and just hope he goes to a map edge where there, that isn't filled with zombies. Let's forbid these doors for the time being then. Or, well, I guess we don't. We can plan it out. Paused, huh? Okay, where do we want to go? Well, we still don't know where the AI is. I don't know how long it actually takes to be contacted by the AI. I think it's something like three days, right? Um, we kind of want to hang out in this, in this area. But to be honest with you, I mean, where do we go? Should we just leave the city? That, that, to me, seems like the safest thing. Like, go up, hide up in the mountains until the robot gets in touch with us. That might not be a bad idea. Now, it's obviously very warm here. Uh, sorry, sorry, it's very cold. It's a boreal forest. We probably want to go down into the temperate forest a little bit more. Maybe go and hide in the mountains around here is probably the safest bet. I think let's head south. I know I said I wanted to sort of hang around here just in case it spawned on the ice cap, but we'll head south just because the summer is going to, uh, or the winter is going to wipe us out. Otherwise, we haven't got any power. This seems pretty good. 5.9 degrees temperate forest. Let's, let's make a move over in that direction then. So we need to go over to here, form caravan. We want to send little Jilp. Uh, sorry, little Zilp. Obviously not the same character at all. Choose a route and let's get the hell out of here, boys. Let's get out of Dodge, except 1.3 days. We've got a pemmican to last us, what was it, years? Like 1.1 year? Let's hope that when he forms this caravan, he doesn't go through a big old horde of zombies. Because again, this counts as our home base. We can't just move to the map, uh, the, the edge map, unfortunately. He seems to be going through a fairly safe route. This is looking all right. Okay, now we know this isn't safe. We've been through this door before, but what choice do I have, really? Okay, come on. Uh, wow, there we go. We're out. Okay, fantastic. We're now on the world map. Now, last time when I abandoned the city, because obviously this is just our spawn point, I wanted to abandon it to not be there anymore. The game kind of shit itself, because again, I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to have no home base. So we'll get here, we'll settle, and we'll see if that allows us to abandon this first one. Maybe we just have to keep it forever. It, it, it makes no difference to the gameplay. Let's put it that way. All right, good luck. Let's travel, little zilp. It was a really quick and easy journey. No problems there. 5.5 days of food left. We're getting 10.8 berries per day. So we're absolutely fine in terms of the foraging we've got going on here. Planet Killer is going to arrive in uh, ages. Six years left. I really need to lower that time in future scenarios, don't I? And let's settle. So this should give us a new little base. Even if it's only temporary, we can battle it later on. Whatever. There's also the ability to set up a camp because I have downloaded that mod. Those things are definitely temporary. Here we are. Okay, this isn't too bad. I'm looking for defensive points, and really there's not too many. Obviously, it wasn't a big mountainous map, but this is fine. Um, we, what we're actually great by here is, is really, really nice. This is good to see. So a little steel wall, obviously steel is kind of hard to break through, especially if you're a random old zombie punching it down with your fist. We got a little bit of vision there, which I will admit is kind of um, kind of not really in the spirit of things, but that's okay. Right, let's go ahead and remove these steel walls and actually get in there. Prioritize deconstructing that. We'll build a door there instead, and welcome to your new home, little Zilp. It's kind of tragic. It's kind of scary. But, hey, all we've got to do is survive the hordes, and that's all that matters, right? So let's get a stop pile down. Let's go critical, and then allow all, obviously not rotten, and preferably also not, you know, chunks or corpses or anything like that. Those are already fine. Okay, um, what are you doing? Stargazing? Not really interested. I was kind of tempted to also add to this mod pack the hygiene mod, but I thought doing that alongside balancing everything else, like a literal fight for survival. Would you rather, at the end of the day, watch me fight zombies and struggle with that, or would you rather watch Jilp, uh, sorry, Zilp shit himself to death? Because I think I know which would be more appropriate for gameplay in my in my personal opinion. Right, there we go. Let's also get, um, I guess we'll start chopping down some wood, build a campfire or something. Because we are in the middle of winter right now. So let's focus on this work tab a minute. Because this is going to need some sorting out. Because I feel like this guy, this guy might live longer than the last one, huh? Um, oh, not that the last one died, it was a game breaking. So that's not that's not entirely his fault. Uh, not really interested in rearm. Refuel, I guess, is going to be important seeing as we're in the winter. Not interested in that one, not interested in that one. Butchering and cooking should be very, very high priority. Oh, second only to hunting. Obviously, we need to actually have something to butcher and cook there. 
Um, deconstructing construct can be quite high as well, harvesting, growing. We might have time to get maybe one rice crop going here or something along those lines. Plant cutting, I'm only going to manually designate anyway, so we can manually say only cut one tree down. If he's cutting too many trees, you just cancel the designation, right? Um, that is, as far as I'm concerned, absolutely fine. We need some points left in haul, otherwise you can't haul urgently, but everything else I'm not really too bothered by. Okay, my friend. Let's go get ourselves some wood. Let's build some doors. The zombies are already here. Oh my god, the zombies are already here. Fucking hell, okay. They're not giving us any time at all to rest her. Uh, right, let's quickly get... Oh my god, that's so fast. Fucking hell. Um, let's get some doors down then, huh? Let's get some doors down. Let's get in this base and let's, uh, let's rest. And just pray that the zombies don't rage and knock down this door while we're sleeping. Oh! A group of zombies appears. Okay. We're up to 60 zombies right now. We're up to 61, 62, 60. Oh my god. I did set it to 50 zombies per colonist, but apparently, apparently that's fine. All right, they're attacking the runners. They're attacking the animals, which is obviously good because that's going to give us a nice bit of uh, a nice bit of respite there. We don't have to worry about these guys kicking down the front door. At least I certainly hope not. Maybe the zombies do burn in daytime. Maybe it's just because we're in a city, so it was super super shaded. Everything was roofed over, and they actually couldn't. Okay, okay. Colonists bitten by zombie immediately coming out for the. Oh god, they're hideous, aren't they? They're actually kind of really scary. Okay, take this guy out. Take out LJ the pirate. We've got a shield, so God knows how they were able to bite through a fucking shield. I mean, it's a force field at the end of the day, right? Okay, we should be fine with our little wrench there. We should be able to knock these guys down. Do you want to actually kill them? Can we finish them off? Oh, right, right, because they're not technically, you know, uh, anything, to be honest. I'm not entirely sure how it works. Uh, what does that say? Yeah, I can't finish them off. Maybe it's because I haven't set them to finish. No, he's still capable of finishing that. There we go. Okay, so daytime's out. Um, both zombies are dead. What do we do? <laughs> what what do we do here? Because I'm, I'm kind of worried about going anywhere on this map. Because there are going to be zombies everywhere on this map. I mean, there's clearly one... Oh, God, there's two there creeping around the corner. Three there creeping around the corner. We can outrun them. As long as they're not raged, we can always outrun them here. So let's just sort of carefully scout around. I'm looking for any food. There we go. That's what I'm after. Things like berry bushes. Things like... Uh, I don't know, any sort of trees. That I, th I think I have got vegetable garden in this mod pack. We're looking for any maybe pre-existing wild crops. There's a couple of berry bushes, but again, I don't want to go too far because of uh, the zombies everywhere. Because there are fucking zombies just absolutely everywhere right now. Okay. Um, hello, my friend. I think we should be fine. With this shield belt, we should be almost unkillable by zombies, right? Because surely they're not going to be able to do enough damage to break our shield. This poor guy just minding his own business. We're just going to club him over the head with a, with a wrench. Doesn't seem entirely right. Are we the bad guy? Are you the bad guy, Zilp? Zombie bite, no infection risk. Okay, that's really, really good. That was the one thing I was concerned about there. So what I'm going to do is set up a very small rice farm, and then we'll hunt a bunch of deer. We'll, we'll have to go and club them, because obviously we don't have a ranged weapon. We could craft ourselves a bow and arrow, but with the shield, I feel like we're more or less impervious sticking to melee. We're not going to be able to make a better melee weapon than a steel club right now, at least not for a very, very long time. Not unless we get access to plasteel, which... Unless there's any that have naturally spawned, that's going to be very, very difficult. Let's not worry about that. That's that's not a big deal at all. Shield and wrench, absolutely fine. Wrench also gives like building bonuses and things, so there is a bonus to actually keeping that above switching to range. So we're going to try and make as much pemmican as possible, So and, and obviously just survive here as long as possible. When we feel like we're starting to get overwhelmed, we'll jump ship. We'll go set up a new colony somewhere else. I think that's probably the safest bet. Um... Let's start chopping down some trees. And what's he doing right now? Cloud watching. So I need to give you an actual schedule then. Because you're being a weird man. Right, let's do that. Let's set a couple of hours of recreation every night as well. So he doesn't go completely nuts. All you've got to do is chop trees down. And start building up this base. That's all I care about right now. Just making sure we've got enough wood to expand this out a little bit. Give ourselves a little sort of recreation zone. Give ourselves a little kitchen. Something along those lines. Everything else then doesn't really matter too much. Um, we want to make sure we've got a nicely chambered entrance system. Because zombies only attack doors. So let's encase this room with another room, or let's specifically change the entrance around so it's a little more, um, it's a little more defended. Because right now all they would have to do while he's asleep is obviously knock down that door, and then we'd, we'd be chomped to death. So every room we attach will make it be the new front door. Does that make sense? So normally we'd put like a front door here, build a room off of this way, build a room off of this way, whatever. We're not going to do that this time. Instead, I am going to again make every new room we build the new front door, so that way. If they want to get to the bedroom, they have to smash down this door, this door, this door, this door, this door. By the time they actually get over here, we can have dismantled one of these walls and actually hauled ass. So I think that makes uh, that would make our lives a lot, lot easier, you've got to admit. I think this is the safest in terms of defensive. Yeah, the zombies really aren't interested in us, are they, until they're raged. Okay, this is this is fine then. Get a roof over that. Let's get a campfire set up. Maybe we could even get some power. 
You know, go out here, find some components, find some whatever, get some power set up too. Very simple rimworld start here. All we've got to do is just, just build a little colony. Don't even worry about them zombies. Them zombies, not a concern. We'll build some turrets maybe later on if we are a little bit frightened. But for now, just box ourselves in. Let's build ourselves a... Bug hive is... Oh, right, on the, on the original map that we came from. That's not a big deal, is it? Right, war revenge, not too interesting. Let's put the front door here, as close to the farm as possible. And there we go. This is lovely. We can build a table. That way, we haven't got to worry about eat a table, uh, eating table malices or anything like that. We're, we're good. We're absolutely... Everything's fine. I'm going to keep telling myself that until we're probably eaten. I'm going to be honest. We're, we're going to be eaten to death, aren't we? Right, get this roof installed as soon as possible. We'll just focus on building everything out of wood for the time being, because we're in the right map for it. Oh, you look hungry. Um, squad up, then. Oh, it's nighttime. I guess they attack at nighttime. Oh, God, we just got bitten. How are they biting through the shield? Is this shield worth nothing? Um, are they going to attack the door? Yes. Are they going to keep attacking the door? No, they fucked off. What I'm thinking is maybe it's like Manhunter packs. So maybe if they are... Maybe, maybe if we disappear indoors and they'll go away, go and hunt something else. As long as they've got something to hunt, I assume we'll be okay, which is why I'm absolutely dreading potentially getting an AI on the ice streaks. If there's no animals for them to attack, they're always going to go for us. Now, to balance that, obviously you might think, well, the zombies are kind of easy. I've set it so that we've got like 50 zombies per colonist times two, so that, you know, it scales to the colony quite well. This is going to be pretty insane. This is going to be pretty insane. The reason you would do that is so that if you had, you know, if you set it to just 10 zombies per colonist and then you made one colonist super, super powerful, you would still want it to have scaling difficulty. I talked about it briefly last episode here. Right then, my good friend, Young Zilp. Um, you should really get a better sleep schedule, my friend, because sleeping through the night... Oh, they did attack the door then. They did attack the door. Maybe it's only if there's something closer. Or maybe it's if there's something less effort to attack than, than would be to knock down the door. Does that make sense? I have no idea how this works. This is going to be a learning curve, and I think we're going to get chomped many, many times. How warm is it? To be fair, it's 20 degrees. We don't really need a campfire yet, do we? Um, what we need is just a nice a nice house to live in. Excuse me. That was my front door. What the fuck do you mean you're just going to blow it up? Oh, God. Well, I mean, we could hold that open and just fight them one by one. That would work. Again, they're, they're, surely they can't get through the shield. Surely our, our shields can with, withstand firepower of that magnitude. Oh my god, there's so many. There's actually so many. Holy shit. Um, Is this shield doing alright? How are they... Maybe... Uh, does shield... Uh, f forgive me. Am I going insane? Do the shields only protect from long range? They do, don't they? I'm losing my mind. Shields only protect you from bullets. Against melee, shields do nothing. Okay. So maybe that shield wasn't as good as I was expecting then, huh? Um... We should still be fine, because we've got, obviously, a melee weapon, we've got decent melee stat. These guys shouldn't really do much of a threat, uh, even though there are a fucking lot of them out there, huh? Maybe I should be abandoning this base already, because this is absurd. Uh, yeah, there's a lot. I can't tell how many, but there's clearly a lot from the amount that they're packed in here. Um, sh can we shut the door? Can we shut the door on them? Can we just shut the door back off with that door now closed? No, no, it won't. There's a body holding it open. Okay, then. Um, this was a mistake. We need to get back to the doorway. We're, we're going to get eaten. We're, this is this is absolutely the end already, isn't it? Oh, my God. There's so many. Uh, Zilp. Zilp, how quick can you deconstruct things, my friend? I'm thinking we... Oh, fucking hell. We haul ass. We get out of here. What is that thing? There's a glowing one. Zilp, please get out of here. Okay, right. Okay, ready, ready, ready. Very straightforward. Run. Run your ass out of here. We are we are leaving. Goodbye, everyone. Nice knowing you. I do need my food, though, because we don't have any. That's uh, so many. 74. I think I need to change the difficulty on this, because this is unbelievable. Um, yeah, they've killed, like, every animal on the fucking map. Oh, my God. Okay. Um, here's what we're going to do. We're going to Shaun of the Dead it. We're going to lead them on a big old goose chase. Oh, he's bleeding out. Oh, my God. He's bleeding out. Um... How quickly can you tend to yourself, little Zilp? Because this could be a real concern. Is he going to go back for the medicine? You foolish man. You foolish man. Um, this could be the end. Oh, they're eating the, they're eating the timber wolf. Oh, my God. Run, 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 run. Run your little ass. Okay. That's giving us a little bit of, of room to get ahead. Oh, there's some in front of us. This is not good. This is. So, I just wanted to grab my food and run, but this is not... I think we're just going to have to book it. I think we're just going to have to get out of dodge. Okay. Um, right, just, just run, just run. Again, go into the map edge, we're fuck, we're fucking dead. We are so dead already. Oh my god, the humanity. I feel like, call me crazy here, this is also horrendous, but this is disgusting. 
Call me crazy. Maybe I was a little ambitious with the amount of zombies on the map at once. Because I thought, oh, 50 zombies, that'd be kind of fun. That'd be kind of ridiculous. We can avoid those. No. No, they are out for blood. I didn't realise they were that aggressive. And I thought during the daytime they would burn or they would disappear or, or go back underground or something. I thought it was only a nighttime threat. But it's it's permanent, isn't it? This is a this is a permanent threat we're going to have to deal with. Okay, so I think I need to go back to the drawing board in terms of difficulty then. Because this is going to hand my ass to me if we try doing this every single time, huh? If you've got any suggestions for the game Balance, if you have any experience with the Zombieland mod, again, if you've got any other mods to suggest, feel free to throw those in as well. I'm going to I'm gonna see if I can tweak the settings so we can get the most difficulty going, but also so that we're not going to just be overwhelmed. It needs to be... It needs to be borderline survivable, I think is the best way to phrase it. It needs to be a struggle to survive, but we need to be able to... At least set up camp, you know. We need to not be overwhelmed by 60s, 70s zombies. I don't want to kill them all. I just want to be able to, you know, live our life, avoid them a little bit. Maybe do a little bit of farming here or there. Build up our supplies and just keep moving. Because this, this was a little too much. This is definitely a little bit too much. Thank you for watching. This series might take a while to get itself up on its feet. But I think when we get there, when we find a good difficulty level, when we find a good gameplay loop, I think this could be our best survival series yet. In the meantime, let's give a shout out to all the insane top tier level patrons who make the series and make the channel possible. In the first place, a big thank you to Alpha Scar, Fasuna Kirito, Atmosis, Bacon Kitten, Sidini, Crazy Pack, Croesus, Donald, Fukuno Vasquez, Fluffernutter, Gogolus, Harik, Jimbo, Jonah Waters, Josh Lindy and Tesla, Justin Wallace, Caden Carter, Michael Mullen, Muskratful, Natbuskers911, Necrophilin, Nathan Flores, Pelvis Presley, Scott, Scans, Somnus, Shakes, Claire, Stannis the Manus, The Forsaken One, T-Bag Cruz, Tom Terry 18, Tyler Kendall, Vacuous Backers, and William Green. Thank you all for your support at the Insane Tier Lovers on Patreon. Thank you for making the channel possible in the first place. Hope you guys are enjoying a little bit of zombie fun times. A little bit of... Maybe I should go on like a rolling Patreon name so that the next person to die... Not saying that I'm obviously going to get you killed. But the next person to die should be maybe named after one of you guys. That would be kind of fun. And a shout of course has to go out as well out to add in person... Asaro, Andrew Wilson, Attila, Bordoom, Ben Trope, Betamus Max, Better Valerian, Black Double H, Chris, David Van Diepen, Don, Don't Connie 207, Easier to Pronounce Name, Emerald Beam, Exploding Knees, Fraser Brennan, Gabriel Van Ders, Gaz, Genji Zerka, Gompo, Grey, Haji Demar, Henrik Stensgard, Icarus, I See the Great, Irish, Israel, Isaac Burrows, Jay Lara, Jacob Wolfie, James Barnes, Jason Sushu, Jose, Yoran DeVries, Jessica Smith, John Holiday, Jordan Campbell, Joseph Beard, Justin Plot, Justin Walters, Llewellyn Thomas, Luke Wallace, Matthew, Monty, Nathaniel Lindberg, Nick, Noah Gallimore, Pan Samu, Panth Pearl, Payback 137, Peyton Denisar, Russian Oligarch Billionaire, Smirt One, Talar, The Bloody Knight, Valonkari, Voodoo Mumbo, Wesley Grayson, Wilson Natef, Wolfie, Yorkus, and Zico 2. See you guys all tomorrow for, I mean, let's be honest, probably being devoured by zombies again.